everybody. I'm Stacey Landberg, speech language pathologist. Hi, I'm Kelly Bavaro, also a speech language pathologist, and we both use a routines based approach and parent coaching within our early intervention sessions. Yeah, today we're going to watch another home visit clip. Um, and we love your feedback, like, subscribe, share, all those things. Leave us comments. We like it. Thanks. I remember at one point we were talking about how those stepping movements, which mm -hmm. really isn't about walking, it's more about them understanding how their weight can shift and how their feet can go up and down. Your couch, like we've talked about, is perfect for when they do pull up because we really want them to practice this side to side before we want them to practice walking. So are there are there any parts of what they're doing or where they are in their development where you have questions or wonder what's coming next? I think speaking and like just verbalization and like communication, I feel really good about. Like they're very, they're very clear when they want something, they're very clear when they're upset, they're clear when they're happy, but like they don't do a lot of babbling or some, some da, 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 da. Yeah, do a little of that and Nathan's a little bit more like ba ba ba. Like if they're like if he's playing with this, he can do it now. I'll tell you about it. Like he'll wave it around and kind of be like, ah! but they don't um <laughs> not a lot of chatting going not at a lot of chatting. You're right though, they are very good at communicating. Yes, your, your your facial gestures could be flashcards. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Hi. We don't uh, ever really wonder why they're how they're feeling about something. Yeah. They make it clear, but yeah, not by using words. They... Well, I think that we're definitely at that point where it's appropriate for you to look forward to the babbling, mm -hmm. like, and all of that. They've been concentrating so much on their motor skills lately that it's yes. not unexpected that you know vocalizations would kind of stay in one place for now. Um, did we ever talk about baby signs? A little bit. We did some sign language with the older two. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be a good thing to start. We try at dinner and we say, do you want more? Mm -hmm. then they go. <laughs> I think the great, the great ones that are the easiest and most natural to implement is when they want something more, when they're all done. And when it's time to eat. Yeah, um, that would be very helpful. <laughs> I, I wrote a lot of notes, actually. I feel like there's kind of like some things to dissect here. Yeah, just like curious, anything about the visit, like the family, Michelle, who is an early childhood special education teacher, right? So she's providing that like developmental service, um, not in one specific area, but like is very experienced with coaching. She like does this kind of work across the state with other teams. So there's a lot of like things for us to digest and discuss here, but what just jumped out to you? I mean, right away, it's that they're all working together. It's that triad or five ad, <laughs> whatever that one is. Um, both parents are present for the session and they're really listening actively. She's giving them such good information and they're comfortable talking about how the kids are doing their strengths, the areas that parents are wanting to work on. Um, so yeah, just that comfort level that they have in this, in this process and this approach stands out right away. Cool. Yeah. I like to start, I was thinking about this recently, like at a, a training where how we've been starting with like saying what we see just like right off the bat, what stands out and what we like, and then like kind of going into more of that problem solving, like, well, what problem solving questions would we ask or I don't know. I'm curious, like what I saw and liked was very similar to you, like just that whole involvement and sort of really asking the parents, like, I think she says at one point, what do you have any other questions about their development right now? So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a great one. Or asking something like what's, what's a priority for you right now? I feel like it gets to that same point of like letting parents bring up their concerns and priorities. Yeah, I liked that too. I felt like she did a couple, there was a couple examples of direct teaching, um, one at the beginning and then one, one after where she said something like developmentally, like you could be expecting that they'd be babbling more. So just kind of like sharing that, like that information sharing about development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so just powerful for them to know and 
it seemed like they, like that they received that. I always like to make sure that parents and she knows this family, of course, more than I do, just make sure that that's settling in with them. You know, she was pointing out that kids sometimes are focusing on their motor development. So communication might take a back seat. Um, but listening in it, it's, I loved when mom pointed out that her children are communicating clearly and that she understands that communication is not just mouth words or speaking that they're doing, they have all of these other great abilities to express themselves right off the bat, you know, that shows this capacity that they've been building and how well this, uh, home visitor is doing, you know, and working with them. Yeah. Yeah. And she pointed that, like, she gave that strength space feedback to mom where she was like, you're right. They are communicating. Um, I often say to parents like, yeah, you're reading their cues to like, give that pump that parent up with some praise too. Um, cause we tend, I find when I watch the videos, like I tend to see a lot of strength space feedback on the child or the children and less to the parent. So I always like sort of looking for like, oh, we could have snuck in some like parent parent feedback there too, that mom does, she is aware of what they're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you think about? And I know like our focus is kind of from the SLP lens, but she talks about, um, you know, she's, she, Michelle says, so when they're against your couch and this is, this is part of the clip that's not there, but parents had said before they're starting to pull up on the couch. Right. Um, and these little twins are 10 months old. So that gives us an idea in terms of like, they should be actually babbling a lot, you know, and making a lot of different sounds and they're quite quiet in this little clip, but, um, but going back, I'm skipping around a little bit, going back to where she says, you know, so your couch right there, when they are pulling up, um, did you have any thoughts about like anything else that maybe could have happened there? I do. I think that it, the way she presented the information was spot on, but then taking a moment to ask for their feedback on it or ask if there's moments where that can be worked on throughout the day, or like just digging into it to get more detail from them surrounding whether or not they're doing that or if they're doing it in other areas before moving on to the next question or topic that she brought up. Yeah, yeah. And I really saw the opportunity for practice. Like we're all sitting here by the couch. Is there a chance that we could say like, so maybe they want to, maybe we try now together. Um, and just so she could actually see motor wise, what's happening. Like, are they actually pulling up our parents, placing them there? Are they stuck once they're up there? You know, I mean, this is all stuff that even if it's going perfectly well, it gives us more information, right? Like, oh, look, this, this, this is a great opportunity to, to model up or some other developmental thing, right? Um, right, okay. to be working on other goals. And they were pulling up on the home visitor. They were pulling up on her. So it's, an, it's yeah, all the more reason to let's try to get the practice in. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like this family probably would have been like, or it could have been really easy for Michelle to maybe ask, like, can you show me? Or like, do you want to try or something like that? Um, I think that could have been a cool opportunity for that. I had a few other notes. Do you have any other thoughts yet? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Share okay. with the class. <laughs> this is the part I want to digest is um, she goes, have we talked about baby signs? And mom says, yes, yeah, sometimes we're doing more something along those lines. And then Michelle says, um, she offers, I always think of more all done and eat as the easiest and most natural. I think that's what she, she says. Mm -hmm. um, and that just shows like how much experience she has. And she's, you know, familiar with what a lot of families use. Um, how do you think she could have worded that question to be more individualized or parent friendly? And I haven't thought through this. I don't have an answer. I'm sort of thinking aloud of how um, that could have gone differently and not that it went wrong, but just like, how could it Absolutely. happen? Right. When mom, when mom expressed that familiarity with baby signs, I think there was an opportunity there to ask mom what signs she's tried or what moments seem to benefit from the signs most or which moments she would really like to integrate them in. 
um, you know, before explaining the, the three signs she mentioned that do feel natural, um, just doing some more problem solving with mom there, or really just listening on what's been going on so far and what her understanding is of baby signs so far. That way she could, you know, the home visitor can jump in with, with extra details and they can iron it out more, but you know, we don't know how much mom knows about it or not right now. So let's give her, let's give her the time to, to talk it out. Totally. And I think, um, you know, mom did show that she like knew the sign and she said it. And I feel like asking like, who can do this? Like, would it be, like, are the boys, cause he has two, the twins have two older brothers. So four boys. Um, and so like, you know, are the other kids able to like model it? Just like you said, finding out when, what about you, dad? You know, he's right there. Um, mm -hmm. do we think that asking them, do we think this will help? Um, yeah, I feel like that just could have like, is there a way, is there something they would be interested in right now where we can practice it? I just, I feel like that was like a huge opportunity. Um, but it's good to see an experienced coach because nothing went wrong here at all. And the parents listen, right. but, um, but I think sometimes we do have so much knowledge. We're not surprised by these questions parents are asking. And we kind of like go into our regular thing. Like, oh yeah, these are the signs that work. They're I know they're going to be easy for the family to use. She's probably right. Um, but sometimes I think we just need to like watch and catch ourselves for a second. Yeah. Yeah. I can totally relate to that moment, um, where you're, you're thinking ahead a little bit, but you know, this family is different from every other family. So for example, there might be maybe more eat and, uh, I think she said all done have been signs that have worked really great for a, a few of your families, but maybe this family would benefit more from a different three signs, depending on their receptive expressive language, their routines, their parent who's working at blah, 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 blah. Um, so I would have, I think in retrospect, especially if I were this visitor, I, maybe in retrospect, I would have thought, Ooh, let me, let me go back to talking to them and kind of coming up with the signs together. That way they don't feel like, Oh, we got to do those three signs. Those are the most important um, but again, this isn't a big deal. It was, it was executed wonderfully. This was great. We're, I mean, we're just nitpicking here. We know it's hard to problem solve with parents. That's one of the harder coaching strategies. So we're just looking for opportunities and how it might sound and playing with the, the language so that we can get more comfortable with it. Right. And I feel like some of the things that might not sound us like we don't know, um, but we would need that parent's information to figure out, are those questions about, oh, you're already doing more. Okay, great. When are you doing it? How is it going? Um, are they looking at your hands and like getting into that detail or, or show me like, is there something we can do and watch so we can see how the boys are responding? Um, and then even like, I don't know, like asking the mom and the dad, like, okay, dad, when can you practice it? Or um, what's an activity they really like, you know, and like finding out about that and saying like, mm -hmm. oh, if we don't do more here. Would we do clapping? Like they love music. Would they, you know, how are their gesture development? I don't know what other jet, like, do they already reach? Do they, do they, you know, clap? Do they wave? Like, I'm curious to know more about their other gestures too. Yeah. I really like what you said. I like everything that you say. Um, but you mentioned getting into the little things that they're doing, asking, asking them questions about the, the details of, you know, these moments that they're talking about, because I find that with, with, uh, my students and, and clinical fellows, problem solving is so hard. I remember when it was still, and it's still so hard. Like, I mean, it's, it's not something that you just achieve magically, you know, you evolve and grow into it. But I think that sometimes when we're new to coaching or, new as an SLP, we think of problem solving as we have to ask the most perfect question that's so perfectly profound and, and poignant when really sometimes it's a matter of getting into those details in that nitty gritty with them and just feeling comfortable asking it, feeling, you know, confident, even if you're faking it until you make it. And then you have the authentic confidence, just saying it confidently and, and, and being able to dig into those things so that parents, parents know that you have this intention and that, you know, you're doing this for a purpose. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I really agree with that. Like not stressing so much about the question. Um, and just going back to that intention, right? Like my intention is to support this family, you know, and knowing that I have a lot of knowledge from my own experience and training, but I don't have a lot of knowledge about this family and that I can only get through them, you know, whether it's observing them or asking them. So yeah, it's like, we're constantly assessing in a way because we're constantly trying to find out more information and and then the problem solving, I feel like becomes a lot easier because let's just play it. Let's role play it for a second. Kayla. Let's try it out. So like your mom, I'm Michelle. Let's just see how this goes. Let I'll, I'll, uh, ask you be mom, if that's okay for a second. Cause I want to, okay. <laughs> so, so mom, so you do this and you're like, oh yeah, I remember when the other one does this, did this. And then it'd be like, oh yeah, you already know this line. That's awesome. Have you already started modeling it to the boys? I, I do it when we're um, in the bath because sometimes they we, we put more water in and I, I sometimes say more before I turn the water on to fill yeah. it up. Why are you doing it there? Do you think that's like mo like a time where they would want more? So you're already reading their cue? Oh my gosh, they love bath time. They love getting more water in and we fill it up to the top. It's like this whole fun thing, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So what would you like to see the boys be able to do when you're in that bath routine and maybe communicate something? Would it be too much to expect them to sign it back? Or do you think you're just at the point where you want to keep modeling it for now? I, I want them to, you know, because I know that they want more water. I just wish they would, they would let me know because we've been doing this routine for a long time. So I want them to just, you know, like make a sound or, or imitate me just to, just to kick it up a notch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Do you think that, um, what do you think might help them? Do you think doing, doing the more sign and some other routines might help like all throughout the day? So they get more familiar with it, or even maybe taking their little hands and helping them form the sign. What, these are just a couple ideas or any other ideas that you might have. Yeah. It's funny you say that because I, I don't even, I don't use it in many routines and sometimes I don't even know if they, if they see me do it. Mm, like imitate it. Looking. Yeah. Yeah. Like Wait. I'm doing it. I don't know if, if it's registering for them. Yeah. And well, I'm, I'm thinking about one of the things you've told me before, how, um, you know, when they learned how to crawl, right. Um, how, just how much repetition that took. Do you think oh it's just exposure? Yeah. Like they just need a lot more exposure or what do you think? No, you're right. When we were learning to crawl, you remember it, we, we were really doing it so many times a day, working on it, encouraging them. It, it took a few, a few months. Yeah. Um, I think they do benefit from that repetition for sure. Dad, and, and then I would maybe turn to dad and be like, what do you think, dad? Is there another time of day we might get more exposure to more? Can you think of anything they really like to do um, that you could model it with them too? Yeah, I mean, when dad comes home, they they play for an hour before we even sit down to dinner. There's gotta be, there's gotta be points in there, right, babe? <laughs> Yeah. And hopefully dad would even answer that question. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So now we haven't even moved into like what other signs or gestures? Cause maybe, maybe, uh, you know, that conversation could have gone a hundred different ways. It could have gone like what other signs, but maybe like just being able to choose one sign and put it up more throughout the day would be more impactful. Mm -hmm. Who knows, right. And we could ask the parent that too. Like, do you think it's better if we're modeling a whole bunch of signs or just really focusing on one? What do you think? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's the beauty of it. You don't always know where it's going to go. If you're going to end up applying it to one routine, only other routines, more signs, it's kind of the, just the beauty of, of working together on it and the beauty yeah. of the unknown. Yeah. And do you feel like, <clears throat> I'm trying to picture like for me as a parent, if somebody were to go through those motions with me, I might even at some point, I I'm wondering if I would feel insulted, like you're the professional, just tell me what to do. Or if I'd feel grateful, like, oh yeah, thanks for like building my awareness or 
helping me decide I don't know. I think I, I think that's what happens when clinicians don't they come back and they say like problem solving is really hard. And I think it's because they feel like they're supposed to know the answer and just give it to the parent. But I think that's mm-hmm. that's really not the point of it. It's more to like figure out what's yeah. gonna work best for that right. family. Yeah. I mean it it always helps in the beginning of the therapy process, I think, to to talk about what therapy will look, what coaching will look like, that we'll be problem solving things together like that. I like to paint that picture a little in the beginning, but, you know, even more so after a problem solving moment like that, especially if I feel like maybe the parent is thinking that way, like, well, you should have the answer, you know, um, I'll usually ask them right after it. How did that feel? Or is this helpful? Um, do you feel more comfortable or confident, like going into the week or sharing this with someone just to kind of make sure that it was, it was nourishing for that. It was like a fruitful conversation with them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and not just that, but you are then building in the reflection coaching strategy, right? Cause then you can look back and say, yes. cause there's actually <laughs> a few things in this whole visit that we didn't see in all the, then this little two and a half minute clip, but like in this whole visit, Michelle does a few, she gives a lot of good information about like how to help the boys, like kind of like get back into sitting position or get down from a, uh, after they've crawled up and about the, the couch and about the signs and like a lot of different things that she, you know, she clearly has a high knowledge base. And I mm-hmm. think reminding the parents, like, these are the things we talked about today. What do you think you want to pull into your week? would be, um, that, that awesome reflection piece too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also talking about, about the babble too. Mom brought up babbling, maybe talking about that more. I mean, she already is covering something really important, so you can only cover so much in one session and you never want to bombard a parent. This is, you know, more just for, for anyone listening, there is also an opportunity to talk more about the sounds that they do hear when they hear them and expand on that. Yeah, definitely like the when, so maybe we can just like, oh, let's just do that more often or, you know, like just getting more sounds out um, and more play and like, are they babbling, you know, and again, this is where like our, our SLP ears peak because we're like, oh, I know we could, we could model and turn taking and vocal this and all the stuff, and, yeah. you know, cause in my mind, even with the, like getting up on the couch, I'm like, Oh yeah, we can be modeling. Ah. And like, but I'm like, okay, there's all areas of development. So we can't, like you said, we're not going to like bombard all of it, but there's so much to probably kind of like problem solve through. Yeah. Once we get a lot more information or see things, right. No, that's it. That was really fun to watch. I know. I, I, I'm just amazed. I see these twins and then I'm like, and there's two older brothers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Right. Two older brothers. And yet both parents are here prioritizing their session with her. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And she's so accommodating too. I'm sure that whatever the parents could make work, she's just like, we'll make it work. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, you could just like take a snapshot of them the the three of them can all see each other. I mean, this is just a little <laughs> sidebar, but they can all see each other. They're both down on the, they're all down on the floor at eye level. The home visitor is down there, but she's not in the center. She's they're They're all just playing together, talking together. It could be, it could be a snapshot if we were teaching a class on parent coaching or routines-based intervention. <laughs> I know the way she positioned the camera, it's like, like so perfect. Like here it is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. So Stacy, do you have any reflections on this visit? Maybe for anyone watching? Yes. If you're watching this and you want to walk away and do some self-reflection for yourself, um, ask yourself or consider maybe the following. Um, how do I gather more information with families before offering suggestions? Or when have I gathered more information from caregivers before coming in to offer intervention strategies and ideas. And how does that go when I do it that way? What do you think, Kelly? Does that work? Oh, that's juicy. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I like when you say it. 
Jeez. This takes self-reflection. It takes work on our end. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not this one and done thing. It's, it's this evolving practice of ours. So I think that you're probably thinking that felt like a really long reflection, but it warrants that if we're really committed to, to coaching. Yeah. And also it's something I really want to reflect on. Like I want to start to notice this week in my visits, do I do that and how, and how does it go? How does it feel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you have the benefit of recording yourself, that can be so helpful because it's hard to recall all the moments of the session. And when did I say this? How did we say it? Ba, ba, ba. So it can be really helpful if you have the benefit of recording. Yeah. Hopefully everyone yeah. realizing that since we're all watching recorded visits. So yay. Yeah. All right, you guys, if you like this video, be sure to let us know. You can put it in the comments or if you saw things that we didn't see or you want to see more of, just let us know. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.